with great pleasure, I am proud to say we are in Danbury today. And Danbury is so, you know, I'd say it's somewhat near and dear to my heart, uh, especially going back to the mid 2000s, I guess you'd say, you know, the time period around 2004, 2005, when the NHL had their lockout and there was no major professional hockey to be played anywhere. Um, a lot of the players uh, got kind of bored and want to stay in shape and uh, do this and that. And so they're willing to play in places they normally wouldn't play, especially uh, in their, um, you know, more talented later stages in hockey life, going out to Europe, playing down the AHL, and some players, some players went down to the United League. And in this very building right here, now home to the Danbury Hat Tricks and was home to other teams like the Mad Hatters and the Danbury Whalers. In my mind, the most famous and the greatest team of all happened to be That's right. The Danbury Trashers. With players like Jarrett Burnett, Brad Wingfield, John Nasty Morasty. Frank the Animal, Bielowas, Chad Wagner, Ruman Ender, to name a few. Uh, the Danbury Trashers were basically the closest thing to an LNAH team uh, known to this side of the continent. Um, basically, the team was, uh, well, we won't talk about the ownership uh, who, who was behind the, the details in managing this club and whatnot. But I will tell you that the Trashers were just a legendary team. And if you wanted to ever root for a team that literally won games by intimidation with a little bit of scoring, I mean, it did have Wayne Gretzky's brother, Brent Gretzky captaining the squad along with a few other um, talented minor league scorers um, but by and large this was a team that literally won their games by just beating the crap out of their opponents so you take an atmosphere like that given also the fact that the New Haven Coliseum was literally just torn down and the beast taken away from uh, the, the fans in New Haven there uh, a lot of those fans just basically migrated way, their way here to Danbury to root on the trashers. And, I mean, you had a section section 102, uh, which was just devoted to the craziest of heckles and whatnot. And they always sat behind the away team bench. And between the players and the fans, I mean, they just really just belittled any opponents that, you know, made their way here from like Flint, Michigan and wherever else. Um, yeah, the Trashers, near and dear to my heart. Uh, had I known I was gonna actually be working on a video right now, I actually would have worn their jersey or some kind of memorabilia, but um, um, well, the sky was blue a few moments ago. Um, but the clouds came back because that's just how it is here in Connecticut. It's pure sunshine and warmth for one hour. And then the next it's, uh, overcast and who knows, it'll probably be hailing or snowing in 30 minutes from now. But, um, yeah, enough about the trashers and hockey. Let's, let's go check out downtown for a bit, shall we? 
driving around in downtown Danbury. We're moving our way onto Main Street here. And one thing for sure is I've noticed that there are a lot of things pertaining to our Union soldiers that fought in the American Civil War over um, 160 years ago now. I am losing my tracker with time and whatnot. It happens with the age, you know. Feels like I've been complaining about getting old too much. The joys of uh, turning 40, I guess. Connecticut towns, Salvation Army. Um, you know, I could definitely draw a lot of parallels with architecture to places like uh, Waterbury and uh, even parts of Hartford, like this uh, town of Green right here. Um, a little middle townish, maybe. Um, definitely a little New Haven-y. You'll, you'll see like lots of character changes usually when you go into the, the more extreme areas. So, you know, what you see here is not what you're going to see in a town like Canaan or Putnam per se. Definitely far more urban here. Oh, look at that. Oh, so another town that Danbury reminds me of is actually Meriden, which I kind of failed to mention. And while you're here, please do check out one of the fantastic Brazilian or Portuguese bakeries that are around town. But let's, let's go find the mighty Danbury Mall. I definitely want to preface one thing about my videos here is that I generally don't do any research in advance. Um, most of what I do is based off of memory and just previous education and things like that. So one thing I can recall is that with the Danbury Fair Mall, uh, it's a sinking mall. Tallinn County has its problems with crumbling foundations and whatnot. But this monstrosity here is sinking about two centimeters into the ground every year, basically ever since its development. And before the mall is put in place. I want to say that I believe this was actually the site to some historic uh, national fairgrounds thing. I don't know if it was like a world fair or whatever, but I think that's how they incorporated the name in there. Oh, I don't have any zoom capabilities right now. Otherwise, I would try to show you that sign. Maybe you can read it. It says Danbury Fair. I think it's one of the more likable malls in Connecticut. I don't know. I 
avoid these things like the plague because uh, you know COVID's going on right now and uh, hate to say it but I buy all my shit on Amazon these days. What do I want to tell you next? Um, I don't know. Let's hit the pause button and see if I can jog up my memory. Oh yeah, so one of the neat things about Danbury is that it actually has its own little municipal airport. And it looks like we have like a Cessna or something that is active right now. Who knows, maybe it'll be taken off soon. Um, Danbury is one of the first major cities that you get into when you cross over from New York State on I-84. So we're, literally we're only like... I don't know, five, ten minutes away from the New York state line. At least from where I'm sitting. And uh, what's nice about Danbury is no matter where you are, it always seems like you can get back onto the highway nice and quick. And the other thing I think I realize is that I think... I God, I'm not double-checking anything. This is how professional I am. Is that... I already made a Danbury video, but all I did was I just talked about Orange is the New Black. Um, so I guess, let me to reiterate that one more time, that if you've ever seen Netflix's Orange is the New Black, all the characters on the show, whatnot, are actually based on real people that actually serve their time at the correctional facility right here in town. So, um, yeah. You know, Danbury has uh, lots of charm. I don't think you can see a Mad Hatter's game right now or anything, but um, when the pandemic's over, show your support and uh, support the equivalent to single A professional hockey and uh, get yourself some exotic cuisine. It's worth checking out for sure. So, um, once again, I'm Greg. Hope you enjoyed my little feature on Danbury, Connecticut. Danbury, Texas! Danbury.